kind of interesting for someone who really does, didn't enjoy traveling. I, I can't say that it's like, a, oh, I just can't wait to get out there and start talking about God all over the world. Uh, when you're shy, and you basically live in the same city your whole life, and you don't, and you're, even when you were a child, and your parents would take you on the summer vacation, I was one of those kids, are we there yet? Uh, my sister and I would, um, but we would hear about these long cross-country trips. It's not like we're traveling across uh, Italy or something. This is the United States and Canada. We have, you know, some shorelines and some long open spaces in these countries. And my sister and I would, we would demand that there would be a swimming pool. We were not going to take like eight, twelve-hour drive unless there was a swimming pool waiting or something when you get out. You know, because it was I was not really into travel. I didn't really enjoy travel. But then again, this is God's plan of salvation, not David's. It's not the personality self that says, well, I, okay, I know the way. The personality self does not know the way. It's the denial of the way. It's the mask. That's what personality comes from. It's persona. There's mask. You can't expect the mask to tell you how to live down the mask. The mask only knows itself. So, anyway, in 1991 began lots of travel, guided by the Holy Spirit. Hmm. It's interesting when you don't really have an inclination to travel, and then when you're told to go, all you're told are, trust in me. Uh, I will lead you. I will lead the way. We, some of us read the Bible. Look at the lilies of the field, they neither spin nor toil. And yet all, it, is it, what is it, Solomon, it's not, it's the whole thing about the, the ray, you know, it's so taken care of. Or seek ye first the kingdom of heaven, and all things will be added unto you. And then in the Course of Miracles, it's kind of like Jesus, like, in case you missed it, been telling you this for centuries, but just in case you missed it, he's got the little paragraph in there that has kind of become known in the Course as the promise. You know, once you have accepted his plan as the one function that you will fulfill, there will be nothing else. It just goes on and on about, without your effort he will go before you, Make you straight your way, leading you in your path. No stones to trip on, no obstacles to bar your way. Nothing you need will be denied you, not one seeming difficulty, but will melt away before you reach it. You need take thought for nothing except for the only purpose that you would fulfill. It's basically the lily of the field, all the good stuff, saying, if you trust, I will take care of everything. And that's a, that's a pretty good promise, you know, when you think about it. That if you just trust and follow the Spirit, everything that you seem to need will be taken care of. He even says, not one seeming difficulty, but will melt away before you reach it. Hmm. Not really talking about challenges and trials and tribulations. He's saying, you will be totally taken care of, completely taken care of, if you devote your life to this one purpose, to forgiveness, to yielding and being in flow in the divine will. So, basically, that's what I really felt to do, just kind of take him up on the promise. So when I was guided to travel, and I was impelled to travel, I was like, Hey, you understand that I don't have a lot of money. I don't know how you travel in this world without money. Uh, and I think at the beginning, I don't even think I had a vehicle. I had, had some money. So I, I was guided to purchase a little three cylinder Chevrolet Sprint, a little car. But, but I said, I, you know, I, I'm not a member of a church or an organization, so I have no organizational support. I left my job, I left my family, I had 
very little. I don't have CDs and money markets. I, I do not have a stock market portfolio. Jesus and I had some interesting talks. I was saying, let me tell you about how it is in this world. And he says, oh yes, I knew that. I've been there. And I said, you know money does not grow on trees. I can't just go and collect hundred dollar bills. Go into Canada. Oh look, a tree of loonies and toonies. It's <laughs> raining down coins. <laughs> Jesus said, I know that's what you believe. And I will show you another way. I'll show you beyond what limits that you have. There are a lot of limits, at least in scarcity and lack and survival. I not only had kindergarten, grade school, junior high, high school, but I stacked on, yes, 10 years of university on top of all of that. <laughs> So I had about, let's say about 22 and a half years of education going against me. <laughs> <laughs> and Jesus said, you, you have learned this world. You built this world with learning. And not one point did you stop to, to try to ask, what was this for? You just continued layering upon illusion, upon illusion, complexity upon complexity. And now after 22 and a half years of this, plus your parents conditioning on top of that, uh, you are not in a position to know anything. Uh, you have wound yourself so dark, into the, deep into the darkness, that uh, you, you really think you know something, but you don't. Uh, there's nothing more arrogant than thinking you know something when you don't. Jesus calls knowledge heaven. And this world is just a layer upon layer of, what did Shakespeare say? Much ado about nothing. You have learned nothing. And you spent a long time doing it. Not just 22 and a half years, you've been at this for millennia. And it's got to stop. Reverse. You've got to unlearn it all. So, in one sense, when people tell me, you know, I'm just, I'm going to do the course after I get my master's degree and my PhD, and I say, let me save you some time. I've been on that road. <laughs> you don't need to go that direction. Uh, but you start to go deep enough with it, and you start to realize that this is a course of unlearning. You really have to empty your mind, like the Buddhists say, empty your mind of everything. And um, it's very practical because when you do empty your mind, your intuition, the spirit within you, will offer you everything that you need. You won't be gullible, you won't be left uh, just blank and deserted and empty, uh, just left to be nothing. You will, you will be guided while you still believe there's time and space to move through, you will be guided beautifully, graciously, easily through time and space. Uh, and then it's like more like the sense of a, a leaping off where, where the mind just kind of recedes into the stillness that it always was. It just sees, you know, be still and know that I'm God. It's, it's really that simple. But there will be guidance. Nothing, you're not going to be hurled back into reality. You know, it's not going to be traumatic. It's going to be, it's going to seem like a gradual loosening from the ego. Nothing's ripped away. In times it can seem, you know, in the dark night of the soul, it can seem quite intense to the ego that nothing gets ripped away. So that's really, it's the good news. It's really about tuning into that guidance. I think I was, I had this feeling like, what other use do I have in time? I'm here to heal. I'm here to awaken. I've got no time for dilly down. I'm not going to try to distract myself and get caught up in all these distractions of the world and waste time. It's no too precious. I don't want to waste a moment. I remember when I was in uh, graduate school, 
And I was sitting around talking to other graduate uh, students and graduate assistants and people that I work with, and and I I'd say, you know, there's something fishy about this world. I'd say in graduate school, and they'd say, yeah, right, and okay, and and I'd say, and uh, and I'm going to get to the bottom of it. I'm going to get to the bottom of it. It's the last thing that I do. I'm going to get to the bottom of this fishy world. And they'd say, well, I would go about it and talk about it and, oh, they didn't, the people did not like coming around me. I was questioning everything, absolutely everything. I wasn't going to assume anything was true just because somebody told it to me or I read it in the book. I didn't care who said it. I didn't care if the Buddha said it or Jesus or Hitler or whatever. I mean, I'm going to question things. I'm going to question the heck out of this world because there's something fishy about it and I'm not just going to take it on a silver pl platter, you know, just swallow it. So after this went on for a while, we started to question things. I remember my friends and associates and they said, David, this is no way to live. Get a life. Get a life. And I say, get a life. Get a life. Okay. What do you mean by like, get a life? And they say, well, you're going to get into a relationship, get into debt, get a mortgage, uh, get lots more debt, get into working to pay for that debt, grow old, get sick, and die. I said, absolutely not. They said, be practical. Do you know how many millions, billions have come before you that have done just that? And you think, what? I said, that is absolutely not acceptable. What you just described to me, is that what you call life? That is, get a life. I'll get a life, but I'm not getting that life. I will not succumb to whatever that is. Do you know how many generations have gone through this? I, I am not interested. I don't even care how many generations have succumbed to this mesmerism, to this hypnotism, to this suggestion of scarcity and lack and death and sickness. That doesn't sound good at all. That doesn't sound appealing at all. When I was in high school, you know, they make you take those aptitude tests. <laughs> And I had some nice aptitudes. They said, oh, very good. You're good at this, and good at that, and good at mathematics, and with a good analytical mind. And, you know, they give you the spit out, you know, the, the printout and everything. And then they try to match your aptitudes with what you, you like, with what your desires are and everything. They tried to, oh, the math, the math came out crazy for me when they tried to, the, the guidance counselors, they, they were like, what do you say to the parents? It looks I mean, nowadays, I mean, at the time I thought, huh, that is a mess. But then, now I look at it, it's like, it was simply the Holy Spirit saying, you know, you are not of this world. You aren't going to grow up to be anything. And when you're in high school, that's kind of uh, disconcerting. Uh, it's trying to go home and tell your parents that. What are you going to be with, what are you going to do with your life? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. 20 years, 40 years from now, will I be proud of you? Probably not. <laughs> Probably not. Are you going to make me proud? Doesn't look like it's going that way. <laughs> uh, but you have to have it. You have to have ambition. You have to have ambition. Well, there's nothing there. I'm not really ambitious to become anything. I'm not interested in becoming a fully functioning human being. I'm not interested in leaving behind a legacy for my children and grandchildren. I'm not interested in making the world a better place. I'm not interested in anything of this world. I would like to be happy. I would like to be joyful, free, peaceful. But I don't have ambition. I'm not going to try to make this happen in the future. I'm not going to go for something. So, of course, this is not what the world wants to hear. Uh, you know, if you had any 
friends who stay with this pen. Uh, you will find that the friends will desert you. You will find somebody else who's a little more normal, uh, a little more uh, popular, you know. But peace of mind is not a small goal. It's not a small gift that you can give yourself. Peace of mind is like the, is everything. It's, it's, there is no other goal. You know, at one point, Jesus talks in the Course about, can you imagine to know what it's like to be perfectly calm, peaceful, tranquil, always? That is what time is for. To learn just that and nothing more. Peace of mind is what time is for. The Holy Spirit uses time to undo the belief of linear time. To return us to the eternal, to the eternal nature. It's so simple. It's absolutely so simple. It was like right under our nose the whole